Hi, today I would like to introduce you to the Mesh Compare feature here in NetFab 2021. There are a variety of use cases that I'm going to demonstrate to you now based on its capabilities. We start right away with a part that I've imported beforehand. And as we can tell right now, this part has a very, very small triangulation, which is based on its high accuracy and very detailed way how the, the mesh is representing the geometry of the part. However, since quite often such a high accuracy and by that a high number of triangles is not required, it makes sense to use a smaller triangulation. With that being said, it is clear that a smaller accuracy is potentially leading to deviations uh, from its original geometry. So let's take a look. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to add the part a second time. As I'm now loading this part, we can still see here that this is a CAD file. And with every CAD file that you bring into NetFab, you are able to define the tessellation that is applied to it. So the first time I import it with extreme accuracy, this is what you're seeing right here. And this time, let's go for a medium accuracy. And this is the direct compare between the two parts. And I think you can see that we have such, that we have quite a difference from one mesh to the other. The thing is now, typically those kind of operations or any kind of operations within NetFab consume data and the calculations are more complex when there are more triangles involved. So at this point, it is up to you to define which tessellation is the right one for you. One way to check whether a tessellation doesn't create too much deviation from its original shape would be the mesh compare, which we find right here in the analysis tab. What we do to trigger this activity is we have to mark two objects that we want to compare. In this case, it makes sense that these are two identical parts. And we can take a look on the compare feature right away. Here, you have to determine which part is your reference and which one is your um, comparison. So in this case, the comparison is the extreme, extreme accuracy. So let's go ahead and switch the meshes so that our part with extreme accuracy is selected right here. You can define the compare direction bidirectional reference to comparison or the other way around. Uh, important at this point right here is to try to auto align the meshes, which is required as they are not overlapping each other right now. So let's see what, we, what it does. Mesh compares also multi-thread operation, which makes it very, very fast. And this is now the comparison that we have got right away, green based on the um, on the diagram right here is no difference. Blue is a negative difference, and here red means there is a positive difference, so of eight tenths. If these values are good for me to go, if I'm totally fine with the deviation from the original shape or from the extreme accuracy shape, I can totally live with that and use the medium accuracy tessellation from now on in my project. We find more information right here in the tolerances that we can apply. So here at this point, we can tell this is the tolerance that is okay for me. Other than that, if you want to be super fine you can now tell, okay, this is certainly something that we're not okay with. So here, this is now how we can use it. M maximum distance is in fact 0 0.1. This is probably where we find it right here. You can also bring it a little bit higher. Yeah, still, this is where we find it. And yeah, this is how we can use this feature to determine the maximum deviation in a part. Additionally, you have the bar chart to also determine deviations inside of the part. This is fine at this point. And you can now also include hi highlighted edges 
so that you can still see, okay, where are the points that cause the biggest deviation. Last but not least, you can still include the part in your further uh, processes. In this case, they are marked both colored. So one here and one here. These objects now include the color coding so that you can still see um, the different points. Another use case for mesh compare would be the check after a repair process. In this time, uh, we're still working with the same part, but as you can see right here, we do have a damage in the mesh. So there are a couple of triangles missing in the outer border, in the outer contour. So we have a hole in the surface. In order to fix the hole, we can go to the repair part. We can see the hole a little bit better. And then we can still say, okay, um, how do we close this? We could now easily use a repair script. We could now also use our freeform option. Let me just go ahead and do this one qu quickly. In order to do it, we mark the hole with the triangles and use close freeform holes. And this is now closed. And after applying the repair operation, you can go ahead and say keep and compare. This will allow you to detect, okay, the rest of the part is now fine, but we can see here, okay, there are certainly some issues going on. The part was fixed at this point. As this has been a hole before, uh, potentially the calculations are slightly misleading. However, we can then def uh, tell that with every other repair operation, we have the same geometry coming out as we got it coming in. And here we are okay again with it. The last use case that I'm going to show today for the mesh compare capability of NetFab is in context of a build process simulation using NetFab simulation utility or NetFab local sim. The part that we have seen so far is now oriented and supported. And I have been running a simulation in the meantime the outcome of this simulation can be loaded into NetFab, the mechanical results, and we can take a look at them right here. So what we're seeing is that the part is definitely undergoing a little bit of warpage. We can see the distortion on the support areas here, dedicated here in red. And even though with a little bit of displacement scale, we can still see that the part and the support are distorted heavily. In order to compensate for this behavior throughout the process, it is certainly going to make sense to improve the support capabilities. Additionally, you could also go ahead and compensate the part geometry that we see right here in the uh, right corner. So we're going to do that. We're going to define, first of all, the part that we want to use at this point for the compensation. So basically, what is your original part? I'm going to pick the one with the supports that I was showing before. And you can define on which point in time do you want to apply the compensation, either when all parts are on the build plate, as soon as you remove them from the build plate, and after the support structure removal. So all parts on the build plate is fine for me. You, you just go ahead and define the compensation multiplier and the mesh target length, and you're good to go at this point with OK. So what happens is that you create a new file, a new part directly here in your part list. And this file, in contrast to the regular support file, yeah, the one that you've set before, can now also be compared to each other. So you see maybe slight differences that occur, but let's take a look using the mesh compare. So analyze, decompensate it, and the regular one, compare 
try to auto align. Reference and comparison are assigned well, and then you can say compare. And now, based on the values that we see right here, tolerances are applied. You can now get an indication about how the compensated geometry is built, as we can tell now from the red and from the green color where we find a difference from, from our reference to our comparison model. Bar chart once again shows us, okay, these are the areas that have been affected the most. And with highlight edges, once again, you can take a look on the actual triangles that have been assigned differently. Okay, for you, once again, you have the possibility to export the colored parts or delete the comparisons as we go. This was mesh comparing with a NetFab. Thank you very much. See you around.